Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Dr. Boyce Watkins from Your Black World and the Black Business School. I'm about to go and give a speech at Millican University in Decatur, Illinois. Um, I was here yesterday for a campus visit and I got a chance to meet with the Black Student Union and just kind of talk about the issues that are going on on this campus. Um, I'm about to go to Atlanta. I'm going to be at the, um, <clears throat> the screening for the film Elementary Genocide uh, made by Raheem Shabazz. Uh, it's a good film. I was actually in it with Dr. Umar Johnson. So if you think that <clears throat> I don't like Dr. Johnson, then you're dead wrong. I don't dislike this brother at all. Um, I wish him the very best. I don't, you don't have to agree in order to coexist. So I want you to understand that. But if you want to find out how to get tickets, you live in Atlanta, go to elementarygenocide.com. That's elementarygenocide.com. Now, let me move into something real quick. I want to say something about black people fighting for a seat at the table. Now, um, I've had uh, mixed uh, thoughts about integration and just what integration did for black people. I'm, I'm firmly convinced, as is uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Claude Anderson, who I talked to not too long ago, uh, who wrote Powernomics, which is a great book you should read. I'm of the opinion that integration uh, was a failed strategy, not because uh, integration itself can't be beneficial, but because of the way we did it. We did it the wrong way, and I'm, we're actually making a film to that effect right now. It'll be coming out in the next few months, but we'll talk about that later. Um, here's the thing. Um, my thinking about um, you know us sort of moving forward as a community certainly involves in independence, the ability to develop and sustain our own institutions so that we're not dependent upon institutions being controlled and held by our oppressors. Now, um, it, some degree of integration with whites and everybody else is pretty important because you're part of a global society. You can't exist in a vacuum, but it has to be done the right way. And uh, so there are plenty of us in, within institutions, predominantly white institutions, universities, etc., that are fighting for a seat at the table. And it's very hard to fight for a seat at the table because many of those seats have already been taken. Uh, many of those norms and practices and the curricula and the faculty and the structure of those institutions was developed long before black people ever had an opinion, before black people had a chance to even uh, have a voice in any of this. So uh, in a way... You know, when you arrive to these institutions and you try to change the structure of the institution, you're going to receive resistance uh, in the same way you would if you arrived at a dinner party at eight o'clock that started at six. You know, you get there, there's six, there, you know, let's say there's uh, six seats around the table and you walk up and you say, OK, where's my seat? And they say, oh, well, you know, we'd love to have you, but we can't make room for you. You know, there's no more seats left, but we understand that you got here late. We know what happened. And so, uh, you know, but you, so you can sit on the floor if you want to. Or, you know, or if you want, you can actually take the seat next to the kids. There's space at the kiddie table and maybe or maybe next to the dog. You can sit over there next to the dog. So we're glad to have you. Sorry, there's no more seats. They're all taken. But, you know, we, we, you're still welcome. We're, we're glad to have you. Well, you know, there's a point where you kind of have to say, no, I'm not sitting next to the dog. I'm not sitting next to the kids. And I sure as hell ain't sitting on the floor. Uh, this seat belongs to me. Y'all took this seat because y'all kept me from coming in the door when everybody else was walking in. And I demand a seat at this table. So either y'all, one of y'all going to have to get up or you're going to have to create a bigger table and pull up a chair next to it. Or you're going to have to scoot over and make room. But either way, I want a seat at this table. In fact, if I had gotten here when y'all got here, we wouldn't just be taking one seat. We'd be taking probably two or three. We'd have, you know, 20, 30 percent of these seats. So ultimately, black people. Uh, with th those within institutions, universities, etc., and I'm seeing this at campuses all over the country when I go speak, uh, they need to learn how to fight for a seat at the table. At your institution, your university, your whatever organization you're connected to, if that's what you believe in. Now, I'm big on building institutions. That's why at the Black Business School, we teach people how to build institutions, which is very important for the, the development of our community. But those within institutions who are trying to change them, you're going to get resistance. It's not going to be easy, but you must demand your seat at the table if that's what you know you deserve. Because ultimately, all the seats are taken because everybody else got to the party before you, but it was because they locked your black butt out. So that's all I want to share with you guys. I'm about to get out of here. I'm about to go give this speech. Don't forget, go to elementarygenocide.com if you live in the Atlanta area and want to come to the event on Saturday at Georgia State University. Also, join the blackbusinessschool.com where we teach all about finance and education and, 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 and wealth building and all these kinds of things that are better than what you'll get on a college campus. The only difference is that it doesn't cost very much money, but you can join for free actually just to get started. So, so come on in. We welcome you and we love you. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Peace.